Ladies and gentlemen, uh, right now we're going to have my, my friend Bill Keegan, retired lieutenant from the Port Authority in New York. Billy was the recovering officer at 9-11 for all the time they were doing the recovery over there. So this is Bill Keegan. Go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, seems like the rain started just on time, huh? I um, would like to thank everybody who took the time to come here and remember those that were killed in Vietnam and all those that were killed in all the wars that America has participated in. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm honored to speak with you today, and I would like to thank the commander of Post 133, Tom Cowell, his executive board, and the auxiliary of the um, Post 133 of the VFW. Thank you for having me. I would like to start off with a quote that I, I really enjoy um, because it shows the strength, but also the vulnerability of our military personnel. Fate whispers to the warrior, you cannot withstand the storm. And the warrior whispers back, I am the storm. And I think that speaks to how our military has conducted itself over hundreds of years. You see, it's with eternal honor and gratitude for every member of the armed forces of the United States of America who fought, suffered, died to defeat evil, defend our freedoms. We pray that every American proves worry, worthy of their sacrifice, forever standing tall and fighting our enemies, foreign and domestic. When I accepted Tommy's um, invitation to speak with you today, I uh, wanted to make sure that you all understood that although 9-11 has similarities to a war, um, it is not the same. And what I went through was not the same as our soldiers go through. And I want you all, family members, to understand that. But what I would like to do is draw some similarities and parallels from my experiences uh, to the experiences of some, maybe some of your loved ones and those that we see on the wall. Going back a very long time ago when I was in elementary school, a Catholic school in Jersey City, Keegan, William Keegan, sat next to Mary Beth Keenan. That's how it was, right? Organized, orderly, just like the military. Keenan, Keegan. Um, but unfortunately, in the fifth grade, we found out that Mary Beth's brother, her older brother, Robert Keenan, had been killed in action in Vietnam. I had no idea what to say to her being a fifth grader, but I could almost feel the pain and thinking how could she have lost her brother who was so young, her big brother. He died on his birthday, April 26, 1966, in Vietnam. He was born on April 26, 1943. We all watched as the big C-130s or whatever the airplane was at the time would bring home the loved ones who were killed in action and we would see their flag draped coffins come off of those planes. Fast forward to 1973 and now I'm in high school in Jersey City and I'm looking out from my lecture hall window and I'm watching as the World Trade Center was tapped off. It was finished, completed in 1973. Almost like wonders of the world. Little did I know a few months later, as I turned 18, that I would get my selective service card and my birthday would be pulled very high, almost ensuring that I would be drafted and would be sent to Vietnam. As we know, in 1973, President Nixon decided not to send any more boys or girls over to Vietnam, and he started pulling the troops back. But it was 28 years later, on 9-11-2001, as a lieutenant with the Port Authority Police Department Special Operations Division, that my country called on, upon me then. And instead of having to travel, travel to the jungles far, far away, I was asked to basically come into my backyard 
and to do the duty that my country needed of me at that time. As I looked out over the World Trade Center, the demise of it, 15 stories of twisted steel containing the bodies of so many, it reminded me of the pictures I had seen of World War II and the burned out bombings in Germany and throughout Europe. I also carried out so many of my colleagues in that Stokes basket that you might have seen as we carried them out with the flag draped over their bodies, the stars over their hearts of the flag. And it made me reminisce back to those days when I saw the boys and girls from Vietnam being brought home on those Air Force planes. So in many ways it was similar to what had gone on when I was still in the fifth grade. But the difference, and I think about America, is that even with the attacks in New York that was supposed to bring down our financial system, supposed to stop America, we found the strength and courage to be resilient, to show the world, to show each other that we still had the strength of our commitment to be a strong country and overcome those challenges. But we didn't do it alone. We did it standing on the shoulders of these brave people that you see on the wall and so many before that that have fought and since. And to them, this is why it's so important that we always come together on Memorial Day and show them that we just there were two sayings down at the World Trade Center that we have, and I know you've all heard them. And it was never forget, and they will always be remembered. So I thank you all today for being here, for remembering them, and for never forgetting. In closing, I would like to give you another quote that I've always felt was apropos on a day like today. It says, our flag does not wave because the wind moves it. It waves with the last breath of each of the soldiers who died protecting it. Thank you all very much. So we have this young lady here, she's going to recite Flanders Field for us. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Good job. Good job. Good job. Uh, that, that, that'll change, uh, finish up our program for now.